What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com. And in the last Dynasty video, we kicked off our new Dynasty with Syracuse. Now, we're sticking with the same file that we had with Akron, but we just moved on to another job again that is with Syracuse. And in that last video, we went through our first offseason. We've done a lot of recruiting, position changes, all that fun stuff. And today, we're going to have our first preseason with Syracuse. As you could tell on the magazine cover, it's 2009, which is cool. It's been forever since I've done something like this. So we're going to go through more recruiting. We're going to look at our schedule, red shirting. So let's go ahead and get started with preseason options. Now, I have already set up my schedule, and here's what we're going with. Starting off, always like to leave the first week open. That gives you a chance to do a little recruiting in this video especially. But we're going to start off with Temple. We're going to try to have, hopefully, our, our first win of the dynasty uh, I haven't looked. I'm, I'm assuming Temple's not very good. They usually are not, especially when you further get along into a dynasty. But they're going to have some road trips. We're going to head to Indiana, and then we're going to take on Akron. I just think it would be a cool storyline if we just had a series with them, go back and forth between the two, uh, do some home and homes until maybe one day we can get to the point where we can just blow them out some more. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Now, we are a one-star program. I'll just go ahead and tell you now, and... Um, I'm only going to have one ranked game, at least in outer conference, but we're going to start off our conference season with a trip to Connecticut, then West Virginia, then you keep coming down here uh, at Pitt, Rutgers, Cincinnati, got an open date, and then we got at Louisville. Then we got a non-conference game at the end, and the only options I had was this for this particular week, Duke, Fresno State, Houston, Navy, Ohio, and SMU. I went with the B, uh, the Power 5 team. And it's possible that we could get invited to the ACC one day. We may not be stuck in the Big East, which it doesn't hurt my feelings if we do, because I think we can win championships here. But either way, we're going to take on Duke, and then we're going to finish off our season with a game against South Florida to finish up the conference season. So that is our schedule, the way I'm going to do it. Since we are a one-star program, I am going to uh, probably stick with the uh, ranked game depending on our program prestige. So for a four-star program, I'd like to have at least two or three uh, non-conference ranked games. That would be nice. So we'll just increase the schedule as we go. All right, let's go and look at redshirt players. Now, actually, before we do that, I want to go to coach options. I don't remember if I showed you this or not, but this is my coach strategy. Now, this playbook means nothing. I just threw it there, just kind of give you an idea of what the playbook is going to look like, and we can look at that here in a minute. But we're going to run a spread offense. We are going to pass the ball an absolute ton. That's just what I want to get into. And our base defense is a 4-3, but we're going to run the Tampa 2 defense. Now, all this stuff down here is all simulation, which we don't do. We don't have to worry about. And I just wanted to point that out to you. So let's head back over to preseason options. We'll go to red shirt players, and we get to look at our team for the first time, at least in this video. So let's, have you, as you notice, this is our main screen of our full roster and our best players in 84 overall. That's just kind of what we're dealing with at this point. Uh, but let's start off at quarterback. Now, we don't have anybody we can register here. That's not a big deal. But it's, uh, we got a three-headed race at quarterback. But Eric Watson is the preseason Big East uh, top quarterback. So I'm going to have him start which is perfectly fine. We're going to go through our depth chart a little bit later. But then we got Green and Westerman. All three of these guys can throw the ball a little bit. Uh, like one's a little bit better on the deep ball. Uh, all three of them have decent amount of accuracy. So they're all just kind of the same. But I'm going to give Watson the nod first. Okay, so when it comes to halfback, we are going to just pretty much do everything through Preston Martin. He is our lone impact guy on offense so far. We have... Curtis Massey, he was an athlete that we turned into a halfback, and he's got a decent catch rating, and we're going to need our halfbacks to catch the ball for us. But I think Martin, unless he gets hurt, I just won't be needing to use multiple halfbacks this season. So I'm going to redshirt him. Now, notice I got a couple other freshmen that I could have redshirt. I don't know if these guys will ever be good enough in my offense to uh, – be worthy of a red shirt. I kind of want to just kind of get them through the system if that makes sense. Like these guys are just a little too slow for my liking. We had to fill some needs along the way. Uh, so I don't mind getting, you know, having them on the team, but I'm not going to waste scholar or uh, red shirts on them. So when it comes to fullback, we're not going to use fullbacks at all in this offense, but I am going to red shirt this guy just because both of these guys are sophomores. I want to have a one year difference between the two. Uh, wide receiver, I'm not going to red shirt anybody. Even the two freshmen, all five of these guys are going to play, especially the two freshmen. 
you look at our catch ratings, this is the number one attribute when it comes to receivers. I need guys who can catch the ball. Well, none of these guys can catch the ball all that well. 76, 72, 74, 74. But our best pass catcher by far is the other athlete, Mike Bennett, an 80 catch. That's why I put him at wide receiver. So we're going to have all of these guys play. Uh, so let's just move on. Tight end. This was kind of a tough one for me. Uh, I got three guys that are all kind of the same, except this guy's a blocker. Our two freshmen or more pass catchers. Both of them got 72 speed. And one can actually catch a little bit the ball a little bit better than our top guy. But, um, and I'm going to show you with my playbook here in a minute, I don't need multiple tight ends for this season. Uh, I don't think none of these guys are good enough to just like really put in the offense hard. But I have to redshirt, well, I have to keep two active at all times. So I'm just going to redshirt one of them for now. And we're going to have Dixon play. Tackle, I just redshirted one of the freshmen. Uh, I need four active tackles and that's what we got going on here then uh we got guard i'm going to redshirt this kid I, again we just need four active guards center we just need two active centers and i had to redshirt one of the freshmen so i just went ahead and done that uh, again i could have taken the red shirt off of this kid because uh, I don't think any of them are going to be worthy enough to really star for me down the line but i went ahead and done it uh defensive end I am not going to redshirt this sophomore. That's just one less guy we can kind of get through the system really quickly. If I redshirt him, he'll be stuck here for a year. And as you can tell, he's not very good. Uh, not for what we're looking for. But other than that, we should be good to go there. Defensive tackle, I always got to have four active, so we can't redshirt anybody here. Outside linebacker, I would redshirt this freshman. But what's the point? He's a 62 overall. No offense to him. I just don't think he'll ever do much here. We may end up having to cut him down the line. So I'm just not going to bother. We could just get him through the system again. Middle linebacker, uh, we are going to redshirt Peterson. The biggest reason why is I'm going to move him to defensive end in the next offseason. He's going to do a whole lot better job there. He's got the size. Now, I haven't done this in a while, move linebackers down the defensive end to get that good boost because they just are better defensive ends than most of the natural ones. But this guy really fits what I'm looking for. I need somebody who's got some decent size and is really strong, and he's got 80 strength. So he's going to be a perfect uh, defensive end for us. I need speed at middle linebacker more than anything else, and I think he's just a perfect fit for down low. But you can't really move these guys around until like after their freshman year. Corner, we can't uh, redshirt anybody. We don't have enough bodies to redshirt. And as you can tell, it's not a good situation that we're in right here so this freshman is going to play quite a bit uh free safety it's like a three-headed race again i don't know what to really do here uh bradley the freshman is the faster of the three but he's not the smartest i need some smarts back there i'd love to have speed as well and you look at the jump ratings this kid's jump rating is like an 85 you know jump is kind of important you know when you're trying to swap balls down and such but we're going to look at the depth chart here in a little bit and i'll kind of show you what i'm going to do there then you go to strong safety we got mcpherson he's our star uh there nobody's going to go over him i'm going to register the freshman there's a good chance he'll start for us next season but we'll see we got this sophomore and i'm going to let him play we'll have him back up mcpherson when it comes to kicker I'm probably wasting my time redshirting this kid. He'll have a very good chance he'll get cut. Uh, but freshman definitely won't. This other one, David McKinney, he's going to be our starter probably for the next four seasons. And we just got the one punter. All right, so what I want to do before we head over to our depth chart, I want to go back over to our playbook, actually. And I just want to reiterate what I'm doing offensively. So if you notice, this is a two-by-two two formation spread offense. Everything, you got two uh, skilled players on each side. Even with this formation, if you put a line between your center and your quarterback, you got one, two on one end, then you got one, two on the other with a halfback to your right. Same with gun, two-back slot. It is no different. You just got another receiver out there. But then you notice, two-by-two, two-by-two, two, same, so on and so forth. Even with our empty and five wide sets, you got two on one side, two on the other, and this is just your halfback. He just got moved down. And then your five wide is really no different. You're just a default five wide. So the way I'm going to handle this when it comes to play calling is my more or less my five best pass catchers. That's what's going to dictate my play calling. So we're going to go to our roster, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So let's go over to depth chart. Just quickly, here's going to be our starters for, again for now. We're going to have Watson start at quarterback and halfback. It's obvious Martin's going to get the nod there. Fullback, we don't have to worry about it. Wide receiver, I'm going to have this set up for now with Meyer, Abney, and Green. 
Um, all five of these positions are going to get touches throughout the season. But we're going to have Bennett, the athlete, turn wide receiver on the four spot. And in our five wide set, we're going to have the other freshman, Harley, be in that spot right there. And the only reason why is because his catch rating just isn't um, as good. So that's what we're going to go with there. So let's go back to tight end. Pretty simple. I'm going to have Dixon over McCutcheon. Dixon's not going to get the ball a whole lot this year. And again, I'll just show you what I'm going to do with my playbook. Uh, tackle, Atkins, pretty simple there. I'm going to have Atkins over Sanders, actually, only because his awareness is a little bit better. And his pass blocking is not as good, but I want the awareness. That's just kind of a big deal for me when it comes to uh, the pass blocking and such. Uh, we'll see how well he handles it. Otherwise, we could just move Sanders over him. You know, it doesn't matter either way. Uh, left guard, we're going to have Curtis there. The be he's about the best option I had there. Center, pretty simple, Mitch Temple. Then we got right guard, uh, our best player, Vince White. And then right tackle is interesting. Notice I have a right guard right here. He is my backup right guard and backup left guard, Connor Lundy. But if you go over to right tackle, He's like our best option there. You see him and Robinson, a true right tackle, but you notice one's got a little bit better awareness, and the other, and he also has better pass blocking skills, and that's just, again, that's a big part of our offense. So we're going to have a right guard starting at right tackle, and I think it's going to work out okay. You go to defensive end, it's going to be Johnson on one end, a man on the other. Uh, defensive tackle, it's just kind of straightforward who's going to go right there. So linebacker is a little interesting. All of our best linebackers are at middle linebacker. So I got a middle linebacker playing left. Our best middle linebacker is starting at the mic position. And then our right outside linebacker, we only got one decent outside linebacker, and it's this kid right here. But you notice the backups across the board. It's just all like the other middle linebackers, more or less. Corner, for now, Fields is going to be on one end, McAfee on the other. We're going to have the true freshman, Nick Newton, coming off the nickel. We're going to have him blitz a little bit, just like we normally do with some of our nickel packages. Then we got free safety. For now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start Eric Owens. I want to see if his awareness is a little bit better than McCray's. Now, let me just look at this really quickly. I may change my mind. Like, this jump thing really makes me wonder if I should have him start instead. Uh, like, yes, 65 awareness is better than 62, but both of them are terrible. So that actually just convinced me I'm going to have McCray start instead. We'll just go ahead and do that. Again, terrible and terrible. So I guess it doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, strong safety, very simple there. We're going to have McPherson and Parker behind him. Kicker, McKinney, punter, Mays, again, just very simple. Now, when it comes to kick return and punt return, I got a bunch of receivers here. Pretty much whoever are, is the fastest and actually has the best acceleration. And Abney seems to be our top guy right there. So we're going to have him be our kick returner and punt returner. You go over to kickoff starter. I just went ahead and put the punter. You go over here and notice the, uh, the kick power, kick accuracy. I mean, what's more important, the accuracy or the power? Um, I'm going to go with the accuracy. Just maybe he'll uh, kick it out of bounds less often, throw off to the sideline. Normally, I put a backup center at my long snapper, but my backup center is so bad, I'm just going to keep uh, our center right there. All right, that is it for our depth chart. Let's go over to rosters, and let's look at our captains for the season. I'm going to go to awareness. You want to uh, sort that. Your top senior smart dudes. Right guard Vince White is our offensive captain. Our defensive captain looks like it's going to be Horn. He's a junior, so maybe somebody else. Nope, it is going to be Horn, which is fine by me. Program standards. Notice right here, we are in really good standing. I'd like to maybe get another player like in trouble or two so we can get that bar down so we can really focus on recruiting and training going forward. So I want to go back to the playbook real quick. I just want to mention, so you noticed our roster what I'm going to do is the majority of our playbook for this season, we're going to pretty much do everything through these four formations, the four wides, more or less, tight, spread, empty, and five wide. I think our five best skill players is our halfback, obviously, and our top four five wide receivers. I just don't think our tight ends right now are ready to just like get heavily involved in the passing game, nor do I think we have a backup halfback that just really needs to be out there 
over, say, our number four receiver. I just think that's just the way it's set up. Now, maybe next season we may bring in two stud halfbacks and we could run more of this stuff, if that makes sense. Now, I am going to use gun split and gun ace and a couple other ones for goal line purposes. We'll just kind of figure out as we go. But I just wanted to point that out. So this season, a lot of the offense is going to pretty much come from this. This just helps simplify my play calling a little bit. All right, I think we're ready to look at the magazine. Preseason polls, Oklahoma, Florida State, Michigan, Cal, USC, so on and so forth. I'm actually going to rank this the opposite way. I figured we'd be towards the bottom. So there we are, 115th in the country. It's not very good. Our offense, C minus, defense is a C, B minus on the special teams. Wolf. You go to Heisman Watch and look who's number one. Brandon Garner came back. And we're going to face him and the rest of the Zips uh, here in a few weeks. But he decided to come back. I just I had more power to him. He'll shatter every record if he could just stay healthy. He already has all of them now. Just imagine what he could do for another full season. Now, the way this works is when I move on to another team, a 1AA coach or, yes, a 1AA coach gets moved up and takes that job. We don't know which one it is. I could go look it up. So who knows what offense they're going to run. They could be West Coast spread. It's untailing, but I'm anxious to see what's going to happen with that. But either way, there's Gardner. Now, unless I've got a couple of USC players, Mark Sanchez, anybody remembers him from back in the day, Steve Williams, quarterback from Nebraska, Atari Foreman. Oh, man, that's a great name. And then quarterback from Arizona State, Thomas Toth or Toth. Either way, cool. Preseason All-Americans. Of course, there's Gardner. I don't think we'll have anybody on this list. <laughs> Would be cool if we did, but first team, second team, maybe we can get lucky and get a couple of guys on there at the end of the year. You go over to the Big East. There is Eric Watson. That's the reason why I'm going to start him for now. Hopefully he'll play well. Uh, but he is on the list. Do we have anybody else? Yes, guard Vince White. That's cool. Anybody else on the first team? No. What about second team? Halfback Preston Martin. He's going to have a big time year for us. Now, again, we got an impact halfback. Yes, we're still going to throw the ball an absolute ton. I may throw some PE reads and other basic things just to make sure he gets the ball when he's not really getting it at times. But I'm really excited about to see what he can do for us. We're going to need him for sure. And looks like cornerback Jeremy Fields made the second team list. Let's go to conference outlook. This should be interesting. So here we are Louisville, Pitt, Cincy, Connecticut, South Florida, Rutgers, West Virginia. And pew, at the bottom, Syracuse Orange. We're going to change that. It's just going to take us some time to get up this list. Toughest places to play. This actually matters to us. I was told we may have our stadium on here. If not, we can get it on there. I think we're a fringe top 25 team. So maybe here in a few years, we can get that list up. So every preseason, I'm going to look into that and see if we can sneak up on this list. I think we're ready to recruit, so let's talk about that. So we have went through our roster. You've seen it twice, both in the red shirting, the depth chart. We need help everywhere. I mean, our first recruiting class, it feels, you know, we replace some bodies with more warm bodies, but not many great ones. So I, what I'm thinking about doing is I may just go after two or three guys and just really go all out on those. Now, I do not have any recruiting restrictions Um with this dynasty. Our goal here is to have the best program in the country. We're going to try to recruit the best players we can. It's been a long time since you've seen me do that. I've done a little bit of that with Arizona, but we're really going to go all out. Now, again, we are a one-star program, so i got to keep that in mind. I can't just go after five-star kids all the time out of the gate, but still. So here we are in recruiting. You look at our screen right here, our little summary of our roster. We still need an extra receiver, but you notice we only got like eight seniors gone. Uh, we're going, we don't have all many spots to fill, but we still need better bodies across the board. Look, we just got a bunch of C's. Like, nothing good is coming back next year. Again, it's just an uphill battle. So we need a little bit of everything. So I'm just going to go find the best we can. I'm still going to try to keep it local. It's just a little cheaper now. When it comes to the regular season, we don't have to worry about that too much. But we got to look at pipelines first. We got to keep those in mind. I want to focus on those. It looks like... Pennsylvania should be one. We'll get to that here eventually. Maryland, we need to keep that as a pipeline. It produces a decent amount of talent. I want to keep that for sure. Pennsylvania should be another one. We have to keep Pennsylvania as a pipeline. It, oh, New York, obviously. Now, New York usually does a decent enough job uh, of talent. Not as good as Ohio when we were with Akron. 
We keep on going. Pennsylvania, see, notice, that's a small bar. There's a ton of great talent in Pennsylvania. We have to go in there and really get some good players. The rest of the states, I think that's it for our pipeline. So what we're going to do is go back to our home state. We'll start there and just see what the deal is. So starting off, four-star quarterback. Now, I think we're going to throw so much. I'm not too worried about getting a quarterback here. Plus, when it comes to the regular season, you just don't know – uh, what kind of skills they have, but I really want to see if we can like lock down our own state. I don't. This kid may have a decent arm, but I'm just going to worry about that another time. Again, in the off season, I think we're going to be okay there. Halfback, nobody. Fullback, don't have to worry. Wide receiver, here's a three-star kid. I'm going to take a chance on him. He's fast. Let's just hope he can catch it. Again, this may be another position like quarterback where I'm going to have as many bodies as I can in the off season that will want to come here, but. Again, I, we need skill players. I need skill players more than anything else. Halfbacks, receivers, and tight ends. We need good ones. Let's see if this guy can catch. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a chance on him. No tight ends. Tackle. We need help here badly. We just don't have good enough players. Thankfully, all three of these guys are smart. Um, I'm going to try my chance on this four-star kid for now. Like, the only difference, yeah, let's go ahead and just take a chance on him. Uh Again, we're a Big East team. Yes, we're one star, but we're still a bigger conference. So I feel like we should, uh, we deserve going after bigger players. So you look at the rest of these positions, not much going on in our conference. Cornerback is a massive need for us. We need help here in the worst way. I'm not, I need, I'm going to go after those really smart defensive players. Um, let's go after this four star kid. Uh, no free safety, no strong safety. So we're going to go after. Two four-stars and a three-star kid in our home state. I think that's a good little group so far. Let's go to Pennsylvania. No quarterbacks, halfbacks. Yes, we got a bunch of halfbacks, but none of them are all that exceptional. I, I would like to – now, this is one position we're going to really struggle to recruit in the offseason because we don't, we're not going to run the ball much. So I'm going to take a chance on a little kid like this. If he can catch the ball, man, he is worth going after. So let's just try that. Wide receiver, tight end, tackle. Here's some more. Um, I may keep this. Like, I don't know if we have a chance of going after a four-star out of state now. For now, I should say. But somebody like this could be worth it. He's just got to be awareness. Let's keep going, though. Here's a four-star. Uh, here's a three-star center. Really smart. Our center situation's really bad. We got one good center now, but he's a senior. This kid is really smart. I'm going to go after him. So defensive ends, middle linebacker, or defensive tackles is a big deal. Now, I still may go after linebackers and convert them to defensive ends. So I don't know if I'm going to go after this kid. Uh, but defensive tackle, this kid right here, I'm going to take a chance on. This is like the one position on defense I really don't care about awareness. I just need somebody who can clog up things and just make tackles up the middle and such. I'm going to take a chance on him. Let's go to outside linebacker. We need help here in the worst way. Unfortunately, these guys are super slow, and I need some speed at outside linebacker. Otherwise, I'd go after one of them. This kid would be worth it, but he's a top 50 player. Do we got a chance here? I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'm i going to go ahead and go after. Let's just take a chance. Let's just see if it works out. He may have a positive pitch, and we may really luck out there. Middle linebacker, I'm seeing three dudes here that all are kind of the same. These two guys could be good defensive ends maybe down the road, but I'm going to definitely go after this kid, Mike Carter. And you notice here, uh, let's go after one of these. Uh, we got four spots left. Actually, I'm going to wait on that. Let's just go after this kid. For He looks like a good natural middle linebacker. Let's move on. Uh, corner, four-star kid. Seems pretty smart. I wish he was a little bit taller. I'm going to move on. Free safety, four-star. Like I, I would love to go after this kid. Like We can try it. What about strong safety? They got a couple strong safeties here. I'm actually going to bank off this four-star. Again, we're a one-star program. I don't know if we got a chance on this kid, but we got some three-star kids that could be worth it, but they are C+. Plus. I need some smarts. Now, you got to think what we're doing with our defense. We're a Tampa 2 defense. We're going to run cover 2 man and cover 2 zone, and that's really it. So these guys have to be super smart and special. None of these two look the part. This kid, possibly. I wish he was a little faster, but I'm going to take a chance on him anyways. All right, so the last one we're going after is Maryland. Let's go over here. We got three spots left, and let's see if there's anybody here worth looking at. Five-star quarterback, Jasper Harris, would love to go after him, but we can't. Uh, let's go five receiver. Here's a four-star receiver, C+. 
Uh, I'm not too worried about the awareness. I just care if he could catch or not. Uh, but he's a four-star. I don't know if we have a chance to get after him. Here's some tight ends. They're both uh, somewhat fast enough. I don't know if we got a chance. They're both four-star. Do we got a chance at them? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's move. Uh, let's take a chance on one of them. Like, this kid looks to be, like, a little bit bigger of the two. And they're both, this, I don't know, four, six, nine. That's not really fast enough for me. But let's just take a chance on one. Let's see. Uh, tackle. We're going after one already. Like, this kid right here would be outstanding to have. Let's move on. Uh, 665, and he's really smart. Uh, let's let's just try and see. So we got one scholarship left. And more middle linebackers. Let me just skip through these really quick. Here's a four-star. Like, this kid would be worth trying to get. Four, four, six, A minus. Let's just take a chance there. All right, so we are down to no more scholarships. So let's go on and sim the week. And then we're going to go after two, maybe three guys and just see if we can pick up some guys in the uh, regular season. So let's go back to recruiting. I don't think we're going to win a lot of games this year, so we really need to hone in, again, just on two or three. So let's just look at every one of these. So here we go. Here's a tight end, positive pitch. Nice. So let's just move on really quickly. Negative pitch for that tackle. So let me go ahead and put uh, – let me put 33 – for now, I think the most I may go after is just three. So this tackle, negative pitch, I'm not going to bother. Outside linebacker, negative. We're going to skip him. Corner, we're at the bottom of his list, and uh, we can move on. Tackle, don't know yet. I'm just looking for positive. Here's a positive pitch. Free safety. Look at that. That's what we need. I love it. We'll put a 33 on this kid. And let's see about these other ones. Uh, let's go wide receiver. This kid would be good. I wish his hands were a little bit better. That's what worries me. Like, we, the Harley kid, the uh, wide receiver, the freshman, he had, like, B-plus hands, and he came out with, like, a 74 catch rating. So, I honestly don't know if I'm going to go after this kid or not. I need, like, exceptional hands. Here's a halfback with B hands. That's probably equal to, like, 65 on uh, the uh, catch front. But let me just go here really quickly. Let's see. Positive pitch? No. Defense tackle, no, and that is it. So I want to go after one more player. I just don't know which one. So it's a definite on this tight end, and he's got A-plus. I mean, this kid's perfect for what we're needing. I wish he was a little bit faster, but I'm not going to be picky about that. He's got A-plus hands. This kid's a day one starter. Come over to my team, please, like right now. So we're going to go after him, and he's an out-of-state kid, which is even better. He can uh, continue to keep that pipeline at Maryland. And this kid is a Pennsylvania kid. Again, perfect situation error. Um, so what's the other guy I want to go after? Again, this wide receiver, I would love to, but again, the, the hands worry me. I don't think it's just good enough for me. And I have to be really picky about the hands. And same with the halfback. I, to me, I don't know if that's worth it. So I'm going to skip him. Uh, Mike Carter, middle linebacker, 6'4", 220 would be a pretty good fit. The center would be really good for us. Honestly, I think this defensive tackle, we need help there, like, badly. 446.05, I almost want to just take a chance on him and put, like, like, if I'd done, like, 20 for him, what, or if I'd done, like, 30, can I do 35 here and 35 here? I think that's it. Again, I want to try to put as many points as I can on the kids I think we got a chance at. So, tied in for 35%. Then we got free safety, 35%. I can almost try. Let's try 20. Let's see if 20 is good enough to just go after this kid. And let's do 40 and 40 for the other two guys. I'm really excited. Like, this is perfect situation. Out-of-state kid with a positive pitch. Out-of-state kid with a positive pitch. And then defense attack on. Again, you got to remember, we don't have a whole lot of spots left to fill. So that's another thing uh, I'm really uh, trying to – put in the factor here so i think that's good so let's just go after those three and just go all out and hope for the best we can get at least two of them all right so i think we're done all we got left is our next game coming up so our first game with syracuse we have temple looks like we got the same amount of talent as we do so i guess correctly on that now they've already played a game and they beat somebody they put up over 500 yards on whoever 
Um, I think they run a 4-2-5, but I'm really excited to see what we can do, and let's see if we can just turn Syracuse into a powerhouse. It's going to take me some time. I think maybe by season three we can really get there, but it, the journey to get there is going to be really cool, and I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are as well. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.